In Gaza, the best way of getting around for those left at the bottom. In this land, the spoils of self-rule tend to stay at the top. Amid the refugee society and the mass unemployment, there is a market for luxury. Model gear automatic. A slightly used Mercedes. Fine, he says, for twenty thousand dollars, cash only. Here, the money and the power tend to stick with those who rule. People feel that they don't belong to this Palestinian authority because decisions are being made by one person. We need reforms to save ourselves, to save and to serve the Palestinian uh, cause. These calls for reform began many years ago, at first from intellectuals, then increasingly from everyone else as well. The hecklers have become the chorus line. Corruption, you know, that uh, we suffer from this uh, problem because, you know, that it's, it's belonged to the highest level of our society, you know. So they, you find that some people or some high, uh, high people and the uh, Palestinian Authority, they t take some money or a lot of money from uh, uh, the money that come to, to support the Palestinian people. Most of them they, they didn't, uh, don't, uh, didn't take any concern of our situation. They don't care? <laughs> don't care, don't take any concern. And the calls are no longer just Palestinian, they're international as well. The latest peace plan, the roadmap, has made Palestinian reform a headline demand, the first step towards any sort of peace process. So last spring, under pressure on all fronts, Yasser Arafat announced that reform was going ahead in a number of main areas, security, constitution and finance. The reform begins here, in a rundown building in Ramallah, the headquarters of the Palestinian Legislative Council. Out of 85 legislators, only eight have made it. The rest stopped from traveling by Israeli restrictions. Those in Gaza take part via video link. The topic of debate, the Palestinian budget. In itself, that's remarkable. The first time the budget's been put up for inspection. It's been drawn up by the new arch reformer, the finance minister, Salam Fayyad, a former IMF official, Mr. Clean, brought in to sort out the cash. What needs to be done is obvious. Uh, what we really need to do is straightforward. Uh, what we really need to do is to have a system uh, that is uh, open, as I said, and honest and can deliver in an efficient manner. And there is no reason, there is absolutely no reason that we cannot put together uh, a system uh, of public finance that measures up to the highest uh, international standards. I am confident of our ability to accomplish that objective. Salam Fayyad still got a long way to go. Currencies change hands openly on the streets of Ramallah. The 1997 audit said that almost half the PA spending that year was simply unaccounted for. The PA receives 10 million euros a month from the European Union alone. But that money's been hard to track, and it's prompted allegations that it's ended up with militant groups. Now the finance minister and his American firm of financial advisors are cleaning up. When you have a system like that, uh, where there is no consolidation of sources of income, under the control of the Minister of Finance, it's hardly surprising, uh, surprising that there would be uh, these kinds of perceptions. And more than that, I, I readily concede uh, that the system, the way it was operating, uh, provided ample uh, room for uh, impropriety uh, and misuse of funds, public funds, uh, and corruption. The Minister's intent stamped onto his website, his budget open to all and he now controls all PA revenue. But he's got no power base of his own. Only immense international pressure on Yasser Arafat will ensure the minister can do his job. This man knows how hard it can be. Nabil Amr is a former minister. He resigned last year, frustrated with Arafat's refusal to change. He's had problems speaking out. He's not keen to talk about it. Yes, I faced some troubles, but... I've heard there were shots fired at your house. Yes, you can bypass this <laughs> incident. But that's true? Yes, it's true, of course, yes. Who, who fired uh, them? I don't know. <laughs>
Uh, we read that they were a warning shot from Mr. Arafat. Uh, I think in the suitable time, in the, in, in, in the suitable time, I will say everything. But now I think it's not uh, useful to say. Uh, I think we started a long march to uh, make a real achievements about the reforms. I think you follow what happened today, the discussion about the budget, and there's a real reforms on this level. So I'm optimistic that we will continue in this direction. I'm not optimistic about the reforms in the security forces because there is nothing till now. So far here in Ramallah, there's no sign of any security reform program getting off the ground. All this used to be the headquarters of Palestinian security agencies. Israel tore them down. But for the moment, the Palestinians aren't rebuilding them. And right now, Israel is in military control of most parts of the West Bank, making Palestinian security officers in these places completely redundant. The Palestinians say that they can only begin real security reforms once the Israelis begin to pull out. Abdel Razek al Majid is in charge of one of ten separate Palestinian security branches. The outside world wants reform here, so the Palestinians have shuffled about their command structure. The international community really wants them to tackle militant groups. And on this key point, no progress. There have been reforms. We've divided security into three separate groups. We have an interior ministry responsible for the police, general intelligence, which deals with external security, and national security, which controls the work that an army would do. I'm supposed to be responsible for security in Palestinian areas, but the Israelis aren't letting me do my job. How can I do my job when we have no money? There are too many obstacles that the Israelis are putting in my way. In central Gaza, a Wild West pageant of rival competing security forces gathering for a political rally. Count the different uniforms. These are the sort of checks and balances Yasser Arafat likes. No single security force ever quite getting enough power to challenge him directly. If you want to know if there's a crackdown on militant groups, just look at who's sitting comfortably next to the general. The man with the beard is a senior Hamas political leader. The US would like the general and his colleagues to tackle the men from Hamas. There's no sign of that here. Criticism instead from Hamas that the PA's reforms aren't going the way they want towards an Islamic state. All reforms are superficial are not essential and not serving the purpose of the needy reform for the Palestinians. So all the reforms at the moment are useless? Uh, it won't help the purpose and it won't achieve the purpose which the Palestinians are looking for. A few years ago, the courtrooms and the jails in Gaza were filled with prisoners from Hamas and other militant groups, but not anymore. Seen from the international perspective, security's gone backwards since then. The Palestinian Authority is keen to show the world that it's making progress towards reforms in many areas. So, for example, the international community wants a constitution. The Palestinians have come up with one, providing, among other things, for independence of the judiciary. So that's apparent success, apparent progress. But that's not really the fundamental point. The international community really wants a constitution to reduce the power of Yasser Arafat. And the current draft, at least, doesn't provide that. According to the draft, uh, the prime minister will be appointed by uh, the presidents and he will be uh, uh, accountable to the president and not to the uh, parliament. So it sounds like the president would still be the powerful figure? Yes. The Palestinians have an anthem. But as yet, no state. Their authority, a parking lot for revolutionaries now locked into power. Survival their main concern, and democratic change a slow process. The old ways often more compelling than the huff and puff of talk about reform.